Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Another exciting episode of Horror Research 30. Today I have my guest, Kelton. Kelton, how are you doing, man? Good. I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. Oh, of course. Of course. I had to. When, um, was it Craig? Yeah. Craig, right? That sent you to me and then, or he told me, he put us in the group chat together, basically, and then left. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Which, was, which was cool, though, because I, I love getting the opportunity to work with actors, actresses, directors, producers all across the board, indie or Hollywood, when they do get those chances, the, it's, it's cool to actually get to sit down and talk with people like yourself about horror and about these films. Cause I'm a huge horror. I love it. I've been watching it since I was about five years old. So for about 30 years now, I just, damn, I'm 35. I'm watching horror movies for about 30 years now. <laughs> what, what was your first horror movie? My first, I don't remember, but I can tell you, I can tell you one that I don't know if it was the first one that scared me, but one that stands out to me is uh creep show part two, the hitchhiker. Nice. Hilarious. Nice. <laughs> Hilarious to me now as a, <laughs> excuse me, as a kid <laughs> terrified me, but you know, as a kid, you have those imaginations that just run wild. But what was your first horror movie? Um, you know, it's, it's really hard to remember because I've been watching them for so long. Like, I remember watching um, The Omen as a kid and The Exorcist, like when those came out. Um, but like, I, I was seeing movies that I really shouldn't have been seeing at an early age. <laughs> um, so the uh, uh, Tales from the Crypt, I remember seeing that pretty early. The the original, like the movie one. Yeah. With, uh, I've actually got a, uh, one of the production stills from that. Um, the most, first thing I remember, like going to the theater and seeing, was uh, I snuck in, in to see the original Friday the Thirteenth in the back of my brother's van. So we went into the drive-in and we saw. Oh, that's so that awesome. drive-in. So that was pretty cool. Oh, I'm sneaking into movies. I mean, I miss that as a kid. Like we would do it for, um, of course, for the drive-ins. That was easy because what you would do is, which people, this was years ago. You don't do this anymore. But back in the <laughs> day, as kids, you know, you go there with your older cousins or whoever. <laughs> even your parents okay you get to the you know you're like up the street from the drive and it's not even five minutes away pull over on the side of the road get in the trunk <laughs> drive <laughs> with two people you get once you get in you know once you get in and you park you hop out and there it was <laughs> you know what i do like about the drive-ins well what i did like about the drive-ins as well is that but you had the double feature and you can bring your own food in yeah 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 i was i was 10 years old when that movie came out so uh you know, I wouldn't have gotten in if it hadn't been for sneaking in. <laughs> See, but I remember doing that even with the um, going to the movies. It was my brother Henry, me and my brother Henry. I don't remember what we bought tickets for, but um, I believe we snuck into. I want to say Bride of Chucky. Oh, nice. nice. I, don't, I don't. It was. It was one of those movies. I think it was. <laughs> I think it was that one. We were probably in our teens, but we weren't seventeen or eighteen. However long, however old you have to be to get an R-rated movie pass or whatever, and we already knew. My mother was not going to go in there and get it for us. That just wasn't going to happen. So we snuck in there. And I know it sounds terrible, but as kids, you don't even think you're just having a good time. Like we weren't causing any trouble. We weren't acting up. We weren't. We we technically, I mean, we didn't steal. We bought the tickets. We just went to a different movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> the money just went to a different uh, producer. <laughs> yeah, that's all. But, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the, the, they weren't really that strict about... Um, uh, you know, making sure that that you were eighteen uh, when I was in high school. So, like, I saw all the horror movies in the theater when they came out. Um, mm. Like all of the uh, uh, all the Freddy Krueger movies, and you know the the uh, the remake of uh, Texas Chainsaw, and like I, I remember going to seeing like all of those things, like Life Force, yeah. and you know all of these things in the theater when I was uh, definitely under the age when. I should have been able to allow us to see them, but and you know what, man? Like my wife and I, I don't know how many years ago it was now. 
it was the, I, I want to say it was the, the 35th or the 20, 35th anniversary, I think, of um, Nightmare on Elm Street a few years ago. We went to go because they, they put it in theaters again and select theaters. And I believe it was Regal Cinema Theaters. That was so cool seeing in theaters. That was yeah. so cool. I was just, and <laughs> I've been saying this for years. I would love for a, a movie theater to have, which I mean, this was pre COVID. I was saying <laughs> it's not now, but for a movie theater to have like a theater, a nice theater to have just where it just shows old school horror movies. And then my wife and I were at the mall yesterday. Was it? No, two days ago. Sorry. And we walked past the theater and you see it's closed, of course, which is just sad. And it was a smaller theater too around here. And I was like, this would be a perfect place for what I was just talking about before. But I said, instead of just older horror movies, just older movies in general from like the 80s, early 90s and 80s, people would love that. Like action movies and horror movies. Who wouldn't want? I'll give you an example. Who on who would not want to go see Die Hard in December on theater on the big screen? Yeah, there was a lot of um, they were starting to do that. Actually, there was a lot of like rerunning of old movies, like really great um classic films from like the 80s and whatnot and uh when disney bought fox um they kind of put the kibosh on a lot of that because they were they didn't want uh they wanted to be able to have all of those titles available for their streaming service so they stopped letting uh you know people show movies like the thing or you know like some of these great films that oh, okay. uh, were, were making their way back into theaters on us on a smaller scale but like it was yeah. it was kind of a growing thing because a lot of people they do want to see those old uh old movies in the theaters and and uh you know they, they were great you know and there's something about getting to see those things like i remember you know i'm seeing friday the 13th in the theater i saw nightmare on elm street in the theater and like all of those and and uh that was just how you saw movies back then you know yeah uh it's either that or you know wait up till everybody goes to sleep and watch it on showtime but <laughs> yeah or i mean for me it was um i have old well, i have older siblings but it was my one older brother and my older cousins and they would let me hang out with, you know, being the youngest, you want to hang out with the older kids because you think they're cool and all this other stuff. But one thing they did was, I want to say maybe not every single weekend, but on the weekends, you know, you go to the, you go to the, the video store, you rent some movies, you get some pizza, pop, all that fun stuff. <laughs> and they would always get horror movies and let me watch them. This was at like five years old. And the rule was don't go upstairs and wake up ma or aunt so-and-so because we're all going to be in trouble. And you know what that means? The belt. <laughs> we don't need that. We don't buy any parts of that. And that includes me. And you can't hang out with us type of deal. So I was just like, okay, I'd be scared to the point to where like, I don't remember who would, <coughs> excuse me, who would walk me to the bathroom, but I would have one of them walk me to the bathroom. So I go use the bathroom, but I always come back and watch the movies. And this was like the times where, you know, when you have sleepovers, you guys are pretty much just camping out like in the living room or whatever, or whatever room you just, blankets and stuff you're just kind of sleep so i wasn't scared as far as to go to sleep because they were all there with me <laughs> but if i had to sleep alone i'd have probably lost it <laughs> i would probably lost it man but it it was one of those things to where like i missed the adrenaline rush and like that you know the beating of the heart and all that stuff and sitting at the edge of your seat kind of scared as a kid when you're watching these movies because i don't get that anymore i'm not saying I, i'm not saying i don't jump during movies because i do jump but I don't have that fear that I had as a kid. And I wish I to an extent, I wish I can have that back, but only from when the movie starts to when the movie ends and that's it. <laughs> right. not, not, you know, not the other stuff after where you have to, you know, scared of the dark and all the other nonsense, but just, just kind of that fear of, and that's not saying that these movies aren't good anymore. It's not saying that at all. It's just saying like, I mean, I know I, I just wish, there's there's plenty of adults that I know that are still scared of certain movies. I, it scares them, and I wish I I kind of wish I had that. To where yeah, you know, I, 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 I have a few friends that can't even watch horror films because uh, it, like they just get too much anxiety. Like like um, it freaks them out too much, and I'm like, oh wow, that's I can't imagine not being able to watch horror films. That would suck. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't want it to be that bad. I remember um, <laughs> we went to go. It was me, my wife, and my brother. I don't know if it was The Conjuring or Insidious, but it was the first one of one of those two movies. And <laughs> there was somebody in there, like at one point in the movie, they just scream, like, I can't take this. And someone's like, oh, you can't take this to get the fuck out of here. I was lost. I was laughing so hard. Usually I get mad at stuff like that, but it was just that and that and that was it. So it didn't bother me. And it was hilarious. But I was just like, holy shit, man, people are ruthless. But it was funny. 
Yeah, you know, there's something great about um, you know horror movies. Like it's such a shame to watch them. I think on uh, watching them at home compared to being in the theater and having that whole crowd. Because there's something about having a room full of people that are jumping. Mm-hmm. You know, at the same time, uh, like uh, my wife and I saw uh, Hereditary when it came out, and, and uh, you know th- those moments, like when that girl would like click, you know, her tongue or whatever, and like yeah. she, my wife would just be like, ah! you know, and like I'd feel that, like I'd feel that energy, and like you just get that from mm-hmm. somebody around, and um, I'm I'm hoping we can get back to that, uh, you know, before the year's over, get back to having that collective experience of being in a room I hope so better, on the same ride, you know. I hope so. That and um, horror conventions. Horror conventions, yeah. I miss so, so much. Like, I miss those more than probably... Honestly, I miss those more than going to the movies. Just because the interactions you have with the celebrities, with the other horror fans there, just in general, the atmosphere, like, everything is just so fun and just, it flies by. Because And the only reason why I say that is because I can't get that, I can't get the convention experience at home like, I know I can't get the theater experience at home, but I can still watch the movie. I yeah. know that they've done, like, I'll give you an example. They've done virtual conventions. That's not the same as not the same being no. there in person. <laughs> but, I mean, I know you could say the same thing about watching a movie at home or watching it in theaters, but I'm, I'm content or I'm satisfied at least with watching it in theaters, or sorry, watching movies at home, because it's like, if it's a good movie, I'm going to buy it anyway. I'm going to watch it at home anyway. <laughs> but a convention, it's like you want the atmosphere. You want to be able to go shake that person's hand or hug Felissa Rose, for example. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I'd have to hug my computer monitor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just hug on camera, guys. Just everybody hug the camera at the same time. And we, yeah, we actually screened uh, Dry Blood. Uh, our premiere was at uh, Monster Palooza. That's awesome. In LA, which uh, I don't know if you've been to Monster Palooza or not, but that's actually one of my favorite conventions I've been to. Like. That I, one's really fun because you walk around there and you see like John Favreau walking around with his kids and you see like like a lot of people that aren't they aren't there to sign autographs. They're there because they're fans. You know, they're there because they love they love making it. And it's like the guys who who actually make the creatures. And, you know, like it's pretty cool. See, that's really cool. I would love that experience. Actually, I was supposed to go to. Was it like I think it was last year. Yeah, it was last year. My my brother and his wife moved out to Colorado, well, and my nephews, they moved out to Colorado a few years ago, and they, they're actually going to have a horror convention not too far from him. It was, it was supposed to be like the first horror convention at wherever this place was. Mm. I was going to fly out there for that. I was going to stay out there for like a week and, you know, obviously go to that con. My wife was going to come too. I don't know if she was going to stay as long as I was, but then COVID happened. <laughs> it ruined everything. I was just like, oh my goodness, that would have been so freaking amazing. Well, ho- hopefully during all this time, you know, people are, are spending the time to write some good screenplays and we'll hopefully, have movies. <laughs> hopefully perfecting their crafts, working on their crafts. Yeah. Which, by the way, I love that poster in the background. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. My blood poster. <laughs> yeah, that was our, our original poster. It, uh, that's not what we ended up with, with the, uh, the release, but that was uh, when we were doing the festival runs and whatnot. But it was based in that 80s vibe of going to the, like you're talking about going to the video store and picking out titles and all of that. So it's the, it, That looks like something you'd see in the, yeah. That looks just like something that would come out in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the movie cover right there. And you would grab it because of that movie. Dry Blood, and you see the movie cover. I got it. I don't know what this movie's about, but this is what I, Mom, this is what I want. I'm watching it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and the thing with that, though, which we all know, you know, the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. I've watched a lot of bad movies based on the cover. <laughs> you just watch, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, all right, there should be like a rule. Like if you have, if you know you have a bad movie, you should, your cover should represent your movie. So you don't trick us, but I do get it. I, I'm not mad at it. I get, I understand marketing and all that. As far as that goes, like you want people to grab this, you want it to grab the attention. And I, I think, you know what, now that I think about it, that's one thing I miss about back in the day before this whole streaming thing. We don't have those cool covers anymore. I mean, you do to an extent, but it's not the same as flipping yeah. Netflix or whatever versus like grabbing it in your hand and you're just like, oh my goodness, like this movie's finally here. Remember those days? Like I've been coming for the past six weeks. This movie's been gone. It's finally, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I know it usually takes me a half hour to find a movie, but I'm ready right now. This movie's here. Yeah. It's like vinyl. Like uh, we, we've been uh, really getting into like going to, you know, record stores and picking up uh, LPs again, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, Something about like when you you bought an album and you you looked through and you looked at all the key art and and you know you could see the lyrics there on the on the sleeve or whatever like something about that having something physical like 
That was yeah. a cool experience. It, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's convenient with the streaming. It's very, very convenient because, again, you... I mean, yeah, you don't have to leave your home, but... And, I mean... For example, music. We all love music. Like I have Spotify. I can listen to music podcasts all just with this little device right here holding. Yeah. I don't even know how many songs it has on here, but you get what I'm saying. Versus all the music you have on here on this little device, you imagine having that on CDs. <laughs> it's just like a room full of CDs, basically. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but I, I'm I love physical copies. I do because like I'm a huge collector of just movies figures and all that stuff but it sucks when we run out of space <laughs> so it's just like damn or even like i'll have there's movies that i have that are also on like say amazon prime or whatever and i'm just like i'd rather just watch it on prime because i don't feel like digging through <laughs> digging through all that stuff to find the dvd or blu-ray or whatever to put it in the place you know i'm just i'll just watch it on the streaming but i have to own this movie as well i have oh, to yeah. have a copy why because <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the streaming like that it's such a limited license. Like stuff comes comes off That's of uh, off of all of those those platforms. So like there might be something that like you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to watch that on Friday." And then it's just gone. You know? Now, how does that work? If you I don't know if you know or not, but just, now that you mentioned that, how does that work like if you for example, you know with Amazon Prime you can either rent or buy movies, the one the ones that aren't Prime Video? Right. Now, how does that work if how you're saying some movies do come off if you purchase the movie and the movie, they can't like I wonder how that um, I wonder how that works. I haven't gotten into that because I, I haven't purchased it. Um, you know, I always just rent it. Like I don't I don't buy the movie digitally. But uh, if they lose the licensing, I know with with books they had this. Um, if they lose the licensing, they will actually take it off of your like if you have a Kindle or whatever. And if if they lose the the license to a particular book, even if you bought that book, they can take it off of your Kindle. Wow. It just becomes unavailable. Um, and, I, and, you know, iTunes kind of had a similar thing where, like, they would have music on there. And and we always thought, like, oh, this is our music collection. But because it was going online, like, like people would lose music because they would just be like, oh, yeah, we, we don't have the license to that anymore. Wow. Or they would replace it. Like, I had a couple of friends that had um, uh, rare versions of uh, certain things, like John Coltrane or whatever. Like, they'd have a, a rare recording. And um, the Apple... Uh, logarithms would go through and replace that version with their version of it which was like the radio version or the version everybody heard and they're like this was a rare version that i just lost you know what i mean so they were like yeah. flipping out <laughs> and my, my my whole thing is okay i understand you guys lost the license but you charged me 13 dollars so i can buy it from you so yeah. i need my money back because i purchased this so i can watch this whatever the hell i want I don't care if I want to watch it. I don't care if I watch this movie today, tomorrow, and then don't watch it again for two more years. I feel like I bought it. I know it's not a physical copy, but come on now. I'm the Amazon. Jeff Bezos, you got more than enough damn money <laughs> to give us, give me my damn $13 back. I'm not going yeah, through that right now. I'm just wondering how that works. It's not always them. I mean, it's not always like uh, Amazon that, that does that. It's, it's the, um... It's whoever owns the license, you know, so like it's whatever lawyer owns the rights to whatever yeah. movie, you know, that that kind of thing. Because a lot of times it's not even like the original filmmakers at that point, because then it's like whoever's handling it. Same with music, you know, like yeah. a lot of music, you know, does it belong to anybody even vaguely related to who, who actually made it? Which is so sad. <clears throat> it's so sad. I mean, I get how I'm not sure if it's the same with movies, but I do listen to like other types of podcasts and I'm discussing it. And how like somebody wants that chance, a musician wants that chance, no matter what, what genre they're in, they sign with a record label and the record label is like, OK, well, we want your masters and we'll give you this much money. And I, I like listening to it now, listening to that, hearing that those conversations now as an adult, I'm just like, if a company is willing to give you a million dollars for your work, that means they know they can make at least I'll say five times as much off of your work and own your work. So it's like, uh, you know what? <laughs> I understand them. Like I get it. Cause some people are just like, it's a million dollars, but it's like, is it really worth that? You know what I mean? Cause it's like, if they own that, they can put it in movies. They can put it, in whatever they can do, whatever they want with it. Right. And you, yeah, really it's, not, it's not a million dollars, by the way, you're like, you know, here's $20 and we own it, but you get pretty much get your movie on the radio, you know, or your, your, yeah, uh, yeah, radio. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> It's like, no, nah, I'm not, I'm, I, I can't do that. Like I say that even with podcasting, if you know, with networks and all that, 
if there was ever an opportunity, I'm not, now here's the thing. If there's an opportunity where I can get on a network and still do what I do and own my stuff, yeah. Which I am working on a network, starting up a network, but we're building. But I mean, if a big name network wanted to, put, wanted to back money behind us, like, okay, well, what's the catch? Oh, well, we want to own your, no, nope. <laughs> nope, because you're not sitting down. You're not the one creating. You're not the one watching some of these horrible ass movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Dave Chappelle was just talking about this. I yeah, mean, one of those things. You know, uh, like he, whoever owns his, you know, his show, whatever. Like he doesn't get any anything out of that. <laughs> you, you know what? What I respect though about him, remember, remember when back when he was doing the Chappelle show? I think it was season three, wasn't a full season, and he turned down like fifty million. Was it fifty million or fifty thousand? No, it wasn't fifty thousand. It was fifty million. And that's when people said he was going crazy on drugs. He was like, no, he's like, I just didn't like, I didn't like where the, you know, he didn't like the direction where it was going. He didn't have the ownership. This time he's like, no, and I can't blame him for that. And now you kind of see why he's like explaining why, like you were just mentioning. And I like how, what was it? HBO took it off and um, Netflix took it off the Chappelle show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. That was cool of him to do. And don't get me, I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan of Dave Chappelle, and I enjoy the Chappelle show. Don't get me wrong, but I get where he's coming from. Like, look, if you want to get, if you guys want to put this on here, pay me. This is stuff I created. I should get paid right. for it. And I, that's one thing I'm always, always gonna side with the creators because it's like, yes, you may have backed up with the money at a certain, and it's always when you need it. <laughs> like he was saying, I was talking about. He's like, I was. He was like, I was at the time. I was a new father. I was in my 20s. You know, I needed the money to take care of my family. I get that. Anybody would do that. And then it's like, okay, well, we still own this. 20 years, what is it, about 20 years later now? Okay, we still own this. And we're going to put it here, 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 and here. And we're going to make money off it. And you're not. Even though we had nothing to do, we just threw some money at you. But your creative ideas are what really did this for us. Like, for that time being, I felt like the Chappelle Show helped Comedy Central out so much. So much right. For example. <laughs> And I mean, it's with, it's with a lot of things, which sucks. It, it it sucks. I get it. There has to be a bad guy, I guess, but it just it just sucks. And like, there's so many people out there that have so much talent that aren't being seen, aren't being heard, and when they finally are, they're being screwed over in the long run. Like up front, like I said, I'll just go back to the million dollars. It's the easy thing to think of. That looks great. Like, hey, you want a million dollars? Yeah. What do I have to do? Well, uh, you sign this paper here and um, you know how you have your show or your movies. Yeah, we own about 95 percent of that. You own the five percent. So out of every X amount of dollars, you'll get like six dollars from us. Yeah. Like a million up front. Read, read the fine print. Yeah, yeah. there's a uh, people think rich and famous go together, but they really don't. <laughs> they really don't. <laughs> like like if you're famous, you're probably not rich because you probably sold up the chance to be rich in order to be famous <laughs> yeah but somebody's getting rich but it's not you i mean the good i mean you could if i guess if you're smart enough you can be famous and famous or rich off of your fame because people you know just mark if you can market yourself right even right. if they have the ownership say to your movie or whatever your music if you can market yourself in other ways that has nothing to do with your music but who you are as that individual as that care as that actor actress musician whatever the case may be right the whole brand thing yeah yeah the branding yep your branding or and in <laughs> social media people will pay to talk to you on social media nowadays right. those cameo things and all kinds of stuff i'm just like i want to be that famous where someone wants to pay me to sit down and have a conversation or for me to wish them a happy birthday <laughs> like yeah <laughs> I, I i wish i'm not me i'm not mad at stuff like that because i think it's awesome I think it's awesome, but let's dive into this dry blood, man. I know you had a great time with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a great, uh, great experience. We were very, very fortunate that we were able to pull that off <laughs> and we got a good distributor. Actually, we, we, we managed to, to get in with a, a really good family with dread central that, um, oh, you know, nice. we got, uh, you know, Blu-ray and DVD release. And, uh, we actually had an album, uh, have a, a vinyl for the soundtrack. Nice. Uh, it was cool. Like, you know, they're good people. And, uh, you know, we, we're still friends with a lot of the people uh, with that label, too. So it's cool. So what, yeah, it, was, it was fun to make. What got you into? Well, how did you get the role? Um, well, this I with Dry Blood, I directed it. Um, All right. So, uh, better. Um, and me and my my friend uh, Clint Carney, who was the screenwriter and who played the lead in it. Um, 
uh, we'd both been uh, working in the industry for a long time mm -hmm. and we were in a writing group together and um, I'd read one of his scripts and I was like, this is really good. We could shoot this right now. And, uh, and so we started breaking it down and sort of going through the process with that script. And along the way, we started realizing because it was a period piece, it was like this punk rock nineties film. Mm -hmm. uh, the further we got along with that process, we're like, this is going to cost a lot more money than what we think, you know, and, and a lot of it had to do with licensing music because we wanted to use like, you know, these great punk bands from the eighties and nineties and stuff. And, and the licensing alone was far beyond what we could, you know, come up with for the entire budget. So we're like, well, why don't we come up with something that's a little bit uh, more contained? And, and so Clint's like, Oh, I've got this idea <clears throat> that I've been kicking around. And uh, uh, he, he sort of pitched it to me. I was like, wow, this is, that's really cool. Let's do that. And uh, so he's like, Oh, give me like a month, you know? So like in a month he had the script together and I was like, yeah, let's do it. This is good. That's awesome. And so we just, we raised the money ourselves and um, uh, you know, in the process, like I hadn't, we hadn't planned on being in it. Um, but going through, uh, the, the process, Clint's also a, a musician and, and we'd done a, a couple of videos for his band. And while we were doing those videos, I was like, you're really good at acting. Like you really understand, you know, how to mm -hmm. come across well. <clears throat> and I was like, I think you could play this role. I think you understand it. I think it'd be great. And, uh, he's like, all right, but if I suck, you have to replace me. <laughs> I'm like, all right, fair enough. And then as we got a little closer, he's like, I was like, could we want to do the cop and you know we were thinking like you know tom scarrett or somebody you know somebody cool that like we could get to come to play it's like well why don't you do it and i was like no i don't want to direct and be in it like that'd be weird um, <laughs> you know, i don't want to split my you know attention that way and he's like well we'd save a lot of money and you get to die in a cool way and i'm like okay i'm in <laughs> like oh. you sold me <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man that's awesome though now as far as directing and acting, do you like one better than the other? Or is it about the same? Um, yeah, two sides of the same coin. Like I really like them both. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate the opportunities I have to um, act in somebody else's project because it really lets me just focus in on one, yeah. one character and what's going on and, and just immerse myself in that world. Um, but I really love the creative process of um making something from start to finish, you know, and, and seeing it with the audience and finding out if it's working and, and that kind of thing. So um, I, I love them both, but you know, you, you uh, it takes a while to, to get a movie off the ground and to get it finished and to get it out there. And so like as a director, it's hard to do like movie after movie after movie. Um, so being able to move over and be an actor or be a DP or producer or whatever on other projects um, allows me to stay creative while I'm working on getting, you know, working on getting a script right or working on getting funding for whatever, <clears throat> project, whatever. So it's a nice balance. No, that's good. Now, do you do like, um, like for dry blood or no, you said you guys came up with the money on your own, right? Yes. <clears throat> I was about to ask you if you guys, if you have ever, have you ever been a part of an Indiegogo type of thing like a, or a Kickstarter? Uh, yeah, we've, we've done that. Um, we did that with, with one project. Uh, and it, it's really effective. Like I, I have a, a couple of friends that they, they've done all of their films through um, Indiegogo um, programs. Um, it's a lot of work uh, to do it that way. And when you do it that way, you know, a lot of the, the money goes to fees uh, mm. for the Indiegogo. and then you have to pay taxes on it because the way that it's, it's set up, it's, it's seen as like a gift, you know, as opposed to an investment. Oh, and then, wow. it, you know, like you're not, um, I think they've changed it now to where you can actually be an investor and you, you get money back. But, you know, we wanted to be able to give the money back to the people who um, were part of the the film and helped get the film made. So mm -hmm. uh, we, we did more of a traditional uh, venture capital type uh, investing where we went and sold points. And, you know, it was it was a learning process, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> as all filmmaking is. <laughs> I, I believe you right there, man. I believe you right there. I, I, was, I was asking that because I, I love well, I mean, when I can, I love to back those just for the simple fact of my 40, 50, 60 bucks, whatever I do, you know, get the Blu-ray, Blu-ray, whatever the case may be. I always try to get a Blu-ray or a DVD. If they have a Blu-ray, I always go for the Blu-ray. If not, I go for the DVDs. But just that. And then it's cool to have your name in the credits. And it's yeah. it's cool to be a part of. It's cool to be a part of something like that to where it's just like my $50 helped. I don't know what it did, but it helped. Even if you throw five bucks in there or a dollar, your one dollar helped this film in one way or another. I think that's awesome that fans get the opportunity to do that. 
and I also love how with with I love with the indie scene in general how with these type of movies it's fans creating the movies like you guys are a fan of true fans of the genre and you're making these horror movies so you go in, you guys go into it with a different and I don't want to bash Hollywood too much because not everyone across the board is like that but I feel like you guys go at it with a different respect for the film you know what fans want to see so yeah, it's like, we, we go with, with there's there's it's definitely coming out of love um, exactly yeah and, and you see it like there's there's a lot of, of directors out there that and and filmmakers that like they they are absolutely you know John Favreau like he obviously loves the you know whatever he's making you know like and and you see it in his work um oh you yeah know, Zemeckis like all all those guys Tarantino like like those are real lovers of film that yeah. that, have, that managed to do what we're doing but on a bigger scale with more money um you know no, so they're, I, but they're <clears> essentially <throat> we're we're still at the same level of being you know we just love it we love the love the industry and we love um telling stories you know and we're, we're fortunate that we get to do it at all you know yeah so what what got you into it what got you into wanting to create movies as you know on all the aspect on all the levels that you create as far as being an actor director and so on um i got cast in a film like uh, when i was uh, pretty young like i think i was like 16 um i got cast in like a western and after we'd done uh, finish the the scene that I was in. I was kind of watching all of this sort of movie magic happen around. I had the big cranes and the guy riding around with the camera on the crane, and and they had all the lights coming in, and and all the people in the costumes and the horses and the old west town and all that. And and it was like you know for sixteen year old, you're like, oh my gosh, you can make a living doing this. this is amazing. And so I asked them if I could help out, and they're like, yeah, sure. You know, here, hold this reflector. And then. Uh, within a couple of weeks they had me like making pyrotechnics and i'm like wrapping bombs and stuff and, and you know to do the bag bomb explosions for the fight scenes and stuff mm -hmm. and then they had um we went to this uh this old fort we had a big battle scene and i'm like i'm holding the the camera down while horses are charging at me and cannons are going off and explosions and all of that and it's like you know at that point i'm in you know because i'm like this is freaking amazing you know like they, it was so cool that's awesome and uh so then ever since then it was like you know going to to, to college for film and, and work in the industry. It's just been about like, how can I be better? How can I be better at this? How can I, you know, and, and just really diving into um, the different <clears throat> aspects of it. And I've, I've been really fortunate. Like I've gotten to work on some really cool projects over the year. And so like, you know, I just try to take in and learn from, you know, people that are, you know, more experienced than me and, and apply that to what I'm trying to create. So. See, I, I like that you said that there, cause there's, and this is with anything in life in general. There's those people who, like you just said yourself, it's like, I like to, you know, you like to surround yourself with people that know more than you so you can learn from them, pick their brains. And then there's people who are know-it-alls or they know-it-alls in quotes. So they think they know everything, but they really don't. And I'm just like, oh, it's just like, why, why man? You keep doing the same stupid stuff. Why? Just shut up and let this guy knows what he's talking about. You obviously don't. You think you do. <laughs> just let yeah. him learn. Just learn. There's nothing wrong. And I don't even want to say it's a male ego because I feel like it's a male and female thing with stuff like that. I think it's just a human ego to where it's like, I don't want to admit that I don't understand or know something. So I'm just going to pretend I do. <laughs> right. <laughs> and right. It's, you get nothing out of that. You get nothing out of that at all. You're just wasting your time versus okay let me just shut up let me just soak this up like a sponge and learn and well, however it can apply to me and my life with whatever with whatever that thing is boom cool now i know something new now i can apply that in life one way or another and make whatever i'm doing better yeah i've, I've, I've always felt like if i'm the smartest guy in the room i'm in the wrong room i feel the same way like i love to surround myself when i can with people that are more intelligent than me with whatever we're doing but even with movie reviews there's certain people who have better more movie knowledge i mean i like reviewing movies with them because i'm just like oh wow i never knew that that's that's freaking awesome yeah and, yeah you, you know people that make you think or make you you know it just makes you better you know it's like yeah. um you know it's a lot like working out if you work out with with weights that you can easily lift you're not going to get much stronger but if you always want to be doing the thing that's that's just a little bit beyond what you can do you know, and, and surround yourself with people who are a little bit more skilled uh, th than you are in, in, in as many places as possible. And, and like I had a friend actually early on when I was starting, it was like, if you want to be the best, work with the best, you know, and, 
So surround yourself with people who make you better. And that applies with everything that really applies with everything in life. I mean, as far like another example, I can, I'm, I'm a huge drag racing fan. Love it. And around, I grew up with it. My father has done it. My brother does it. I started doing it. And when I started, I was doing, obviously I was just doing, it's called test and tune, like practice runs. And then I was just like, I need to get in competition. And the very first time I went and comp- ran in competition, I made it to the semifinals. The next couple times I did, I lost in the first round, but I had so yeah. much fun. <laughs> I had so much, and I can't wait to do it again next summer. But it, it was just one of those things to where it's like, yes, it's fun. like you do the, you know, you do the testing to or just to kind of learn. It wasn't a very fast car, which is fine, but you kind of just to learn, learn, but you know, because sitting in the stands for anything, everything looks easy when you're just watching. Right. The fan, <laughs> everything looks easy until you're out there. Like what? I, what? I, I'm using that as an example. Like when I'm out there on the track. You want to go, you know, you want to cut a good light, this, that, and the third, and everything looks easy. And then once you get down there, just like, oh man, this is a lot. Like everything moves down there a lot faster than you really think it does. Right. <laughs> From the stage. And it's like, okay, this isn't as easy as I thought, but it's fun. And I guess you can apply that with anything in life for the most part. I'm just thinking of like hobby type things where you're just like, I, I, a movie. I know damn well I can't make a movie, but I talk so much shit about movies. <laughs> I talk so like, oh my God. I'll even say I could have did a better job with certain movies, knowing damn well I can't. Because again, I'm watching it and what I'm seeing and listening to and all this other stuff. I'm just like, I feel like I could do better. But again, once you're actually doing that, writing that script or acting out that scene, whatever the case may be, making those special effects, it's not that easy. If it was, I look at things like that to where if, if all those things were easy, and I'll say those things to where people, you know, movies or whatever the case may be everybody would be doing it because it'd be that easy and it wouldn't really be worth what it is it wouldn't be as it wouldn't be as great if it was that easy if that makes sense yeah it's 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 not (laughs) it's not easy but it's uh that's kind of what makes it worth doing uh yeah you should make a movie actually you know i I think everyone should you know it's it's funny you say that because i i just want to do like i was talking to some friends and they one of my friends has been telling me for the past since i started this podcast which january 1st is actually three years he was like aaron you gotta you just do something he's like just grab your phone just do something simple do something cheesy and simple just because he's yeah. like you're such a huge horror fan you need to so i'm going to try something this year i'll let you know off air what my idea is it's a very very simple very simple idea but just just to do something and if everything goes well, the where I can do it, and what, if and when I do it, I'm gonna put it right on YouTube. Like it's not gonna be a long movie, people. It's gonna be more of like a short. And I don't care if you like it or not. <laughs> I'm gonna say that right now because <laughs> there's a lot of things that I like. There's a lot of things that I don't like. But the reason why I say that is because if you are whatever you do in life, as a I'll say if you're a creator, whatever the case may be, as long as you had, and it's not harming anybody. I don't mean anything in life, but as long as you had fun doing it and as long as you try doing it you won because you actually did it yeah you know it's like like you put your heart into it and and just do it yeah you had fun with it at the very and try to have fun with things too like i know everything isn't you know fun in games but you gotta especially i feel like with creating or doing a hobby type thing and i mean when i say hobby i just mean things that you actually like doing that's why i I don't mean like a regular just you know fun stuff movie making whatever it is if you enjoy doing it, that should be all that really matters. Like for me, podcasting, I'm sure there's a pe- ton of people that listen to my show and they're just like, this show is fucking terrible. I can't stand this guy's voice. I don't care. Like <laughs> that, that doesn't bother me. I, I wish people would leave like, as far as you know, that people leave comments to troll you and all that. I would love to have trolls. That wouldn't, that honestly would not bother me because I do this for myself. I have fun doing what I do. And if you don't like it, I mean, you don't have to sit here and listen or watch <laughs> you. And it's the same. It's a, I know it's the same with movies, but it's a little different for me because I'm a podcaster and it's like, okay. And I do now. I do, you know, the one show I do any genre is non horror. This show I do horror. So it's like, well, now I have that wheel. So whatever the wheel picks, I have to watch and review it. So I, <laughs> I don't have a choice. <laughs> I don't really have a choice, but I like it. Like, I the thing I like about watching, I'll say for for example, which I want to hear your opinion on this. The thing I, as being a podcaster, I'll say the thing I like about watching bad horror movies or bad movies in general 
is the reviewing process is so fun. It's so oh, yeah. fun. Versus, I mean, like a good. Don't get me wrong. I love watching good movies and reviewing those as well. But a bad movie, it's just like it's just so fun. Like we did um, <laughs> on the other show, we did popcorn or on popcorn and pints. We did Freddie got fingered a few weeks ago, and my one friend was just so angry. <laughs> through the whole review which just it just made it so much better but it, what it is though is it's like it's it's like how he really felt like just he really did not like that i mean none of us like the movie but he really hated that movie and was just so mad but it was just so funny and so natural and that's the fun thing about like watching and reviewing bad movies Ver- i mean a good movie again you could still get the great conversations about it but there's times where we've we've reviewed good movies and we'll bring up a bad movie I don't know why. <laughs> but like, at least it was better than, you know, it was way better than such and such and da 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 da. And then go back to the good movie. And it's just, I don't know. Is it like that on your end as far as watching movies or? You, you know, I feel like a great movie you can watch by yourself, but a bad movie you have to watch with friends. I agree with that. that. That's where the fun is of like, oh my God, that, that, that looks terrible. Or, oh, this is like, yes. you know. But, you know, even if I'm watching a bad movie, I'm still having a good time because I'm watching a movie, you know, <laughs> like, so it's all good, you know. See, me, me I'm, I'm it's so hard. Not, not that it's hard for me to watch movies now because it's not, but it's just like. I just started about. Actually, this last week, my friend and I talked about it, my co-host on, on, on this show, actually, we were talking one of my co-hosts, I should say. We we're just discussing what days would be the easiest for us to record the live show. So we're, we do Tuesdays and Thursdays at nine o'clock. So it's like, OK, I have, you know, I have the days in between. So I, I told you or no, I told someone somebody else. But Mondays and Wednesdays are like my interview days. Now, it doesn't mean I wouldn't do a movie review with somebody else on a Monday or a Wednesday. But like Tuesdays and Thursdays are my main days and then Saturdays, my other show. So it's like I, I have a wife. I have a nine. I have a job. So I have to. I have to work. I have to find time to spend time with, you know, spend time with the wife and also these movies and record. So I really like most of the movies I watch now are for the podcast for the most part. And I mean, I started my year off with Freddie got fingered, which was probably a bad idea, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, hopefully, for this year, really. <laughs> hopefully I end the year be- with a bet. Hopefully, well, whatever the wheels pick for on either show, hopefully we end the year better than what we started movie wise, <laughs> but it's, it, it makes fun. You know what? Another thing about bad movies, they make some fun conversations, real fun conversations. It's like Batman and Robin, fun conversation. If you've seen it, if you haven't, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I watch a lot of movies, and and I actually learned a lot watching bad movies. Um, just as a filmmaker, because I, I watch them and I'm like that almost worked, you know, like why, mm-hmm. why didn't that work? And like, what, what is it that's making this bad? You know? And it's like, you know, so it makes, makes you better as an actor or a director, you know, cause you're seeing that like a lot of times it's because the, you know, the actor saying the lines as they're written without putting anything underneath them, or they're not connecting to the circumstance yes. in some way that makes it sort of silly or, um, you know, it's a structural problem with the storytelling or something, but it, like y- you can see it usually, um, but for me, it's always interesting to see something like aspirational where they tried to do something cool or great or whatever, and they just kind of missed. And, and, you know, to me, those, those films are, are sort of fascinating of like, why didn't that work? It almost did. I, I love that you said that. Cause one thing that really stands out, I mean, as far as the acting goes is the emotions they show on their faces, like the facial expressions. Like if you're mad, I like when somebody actually looks mad or sad or happy, like in their face. I know, I know it's more than just somebody smiling or somebody crying on screen. It's when you, you know how it is. Like when you're mad, like I'm sure, I'm sure there's times where you're pissed. Or, or I'll use a better example. Cause we're both married men. When our wives are mad, you could just see it in their eyes and their face without them even making an expression. You just, you just know, you just look at it's like, Oh shit. <laughs> you know, if they're behind you, if they're mad. Yeah. Like, you're exactly like, <laughs> electricity in the room is off i'm like i yep. gotta get out of here <laughs> and that, that's the feeling that's the feeling and that's the visuals i like when i watch movies is the facial expressions of people the eyes and everything like if you can sell it like that i think that's huge for me that's huge and it's it's something i just recently started doing within the past few years honestly like i never really paid attention to, especially as a kid you don't pay attention you just want something to be cool but now i'm just like okay now i want it to be more than just 
and I mean that's not for every. It does, it's not important in every single movie. Like a slasher flick, I I don't care. But just move, just you know, just in that movie, you want to see the fear in somebody's eyes in a horror movie. You want to see them actually looking scared, not just that. I don't even know how to put it into words. Not I know they're acting in a movie, but you don't want them to look like they're acting like they're scared versus them really looking like they're scared. Yeah. I don't know if that came out right at all, but it made sense (laughs) to me in my head. And that's, that's just something I, I'm sure some people can learn it, but I feel like that's also something that some people just have it and some don't. Yeah. It's a, it's a combination, you know, like, uh, acting's a lot more work than what it looks like. Um, and, and especially the, the actors that, that make it look easy and they're like, oh, I just do my things. Like those people work a lot. You know, they mm-hmm. work a lot at, at really understanding the, the subtext and what's going on and, and, you know, what are they not saying? And, you know, there's a whole world that they're creating in their head. And so like, it's a really, it's a matter of developing your imagination to a really strong degree and then knowing what, um, what the camera sees, you know, like, like what you can do and, and how you can be uh, relaxed and, and present in a moment and not trying to be like, Oh, I'm scared, you know, but like really feeling it and, and having techniques that make you feel like you're really scared and, and that you can really put yourself in this imaginative world. Cause that's what the audience is doing. I mean, the audience yeah. is watching a movie and they're getting scared or they're getting concerned because, because they're allowing themselves to believe that this is really happening. And so, mm-hmm if as an actor you're not doing that yourself then you're asking the audience to do something that you're not willing to do good point good point very good point actually see now (laughs) which oh man yeah i I do you're right i i gotta do some sort of short some sort of short people I, i gotta do it i'm going to eventually but i just just for a joke wise i was just thinking of just like me being in a slasher film for me to show fear, I don't know how I would do it. I'd have to like picture my childhood of me getting ready to like you get that school phone call home and your mother answered the phone, <laughs> and you know what's gonna happen. Like you, you need to just like picture the the picture the killer, like say Jason Voorhees, being your your mom with the belt coming after you because you messed up, and you being that eight year old kid. <laughs> 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 and, you know, and the funny thing is, like I I always make fun of horror movies because they always do the dumbest stuff as far as like when they're running from the killer, they go upstairs and I'm like, okay, you're, you ran up to the third floor. There's no way in hell you're going to jump out this damn window and be fine. Why did you do this? You ran into the closet knowing damn well, the person seen you do it. <laughs> and I think of, again, going back as a kid, you get scared. Your mother comes after you, you run upstairs in your room and hide under the bed as a blanket. Like that's going to do something that doesn't right. nothing to, but piss <laughs> them off. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, cut, I, I love telling this one story. I wasn't there for it. But you know those closet doors that just kind of the slide. You know the sliding doors. They're but they're not glass. Just like the ones that fold right. accordion. This fool. <laughs> he was like, I remember, he was talking about some. We were talking about this a while ago. But he was like, yeah, I remember when I was a kid, and he did something stupid. He did something to get a spanking, and he ran up and hit in his closet. It was just one, he said he just ripped the door off. <laughs> I was like, you had nowhere to go. But it's it's just like a horror movie to where, yeah. especially like the cheesy slashers, to where it's like they run up and hide and, again nowhere to go and i'm just like i guess i'll have to put that mindset (laughs) i guess i have to go back to that mindset if if possible but but seriously like i i love when people can show emotions on their faces for any genre of movie because it just it makes that scene that much better to where you actually not only do you feel the emotion but um it makes you care about the character somewhat it either makes you love him i mean like him love him or hate him yeah but yeah, it's if, like, believe, if you see them as real, real people, then you can yeah. empathize with them. You know, if, if you see them as an actor playing something, then you're just like, you don't really care. Uh, you're just like, eh. like, but again, like you're saying, if you see them to where you have that emotion where you like them, love me, whatever the case may be, it's like, okay, you know what? I can't wait for this guy to get his head cut off because I cannot stand him. He's such an asshole. He's such a jerk. Whatever the case may be, or I hope he or she survives because they're so, you know, they're doing the right things. They're nice people. Whatever. You Sean, think- Sean actually, Sean told me uh, years ago, he's like, you know, you, you want to create characters that the audience uh, is going to like, but you want to create characters that the audience is really going to like seeing get killed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like that, that, you know, to me, like that, that's the yeah. essence of like good horror writing is that like you want to like the characters, but you also want to really enjoy seeing them get it. You know, yeah. 
I agree with that 100%. And it, it even comes to the point where you might have, say there's a movie with six characters, six, you know, six characters, like a slasher. There's always that one character that nobody likes, which I love that. I love when they do that. Cause you're just like, I hope he gets like, he or she gets that one wild. You want them to have like the best kill in the movie. Oh yeah. yeah, not yeah. Them. And then there's like the one character where, 90 percent of the people like and when they die you're just like well shit you could let them survive you'd have to do it like that you'd have to do them like that now did you jason <laughs> and then there's the, and then there's the ones that are in the middle which i do again going to the horror and the slashes i like how when they have the court i guess you would say the extra characters to where it's like just for like a body count for a cool body count there's a few characters um, there's say there's again six characters there's two you hate or there's one you hate, there's one you like, and then there's four that are kind of like in the middle. But you want to see something. You want those are the ones you want to see like a really really cool kill. And it's like, yeah, this this works now. You got this person surviving. You got this person dying. You got all these people dying. But it doesn't bother me. Like I I like when you have those extra kills, especially when you have a movie to where say there's like 10, 15 kills. You have those extra quick kills off, but you still have some character development with like the main three. Right. Those are just entertaining very entertaining yeah it's always good too if, if like with those those other characters if if you give them at least like one thing that they do wrong you know like yep. one where, where like the audience is like oh you should not oh that's yeah. not good <laughs> yeah it's like watching somebody walk into a pole you know you're like hey yo oh that hurt and you know, you know? <laughs> that's fun <laughs> I'll, I'll always make the jokes of um like you know people say like the main the rules in horror movies to survive such like a slash or like you know don't drink don't smoke don't have sex and all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, don't be black. <laughs> somehow we're always getting killed first. And I'm just like, well, I was like, I'm just going to die, man, because I'm going to do all those things. <laughs> <laughs> do all those things. <laughs> yeah. Like what's the point of going, what's the point of going on this little road trip or camping with you say your girlfriend and a bunch of friends. If you're not going to do all that stuff, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to go. Okay. So we're going to go here. We're going to spend the weekend here or the week here. We're not going to drink. We're not going to smoke. We're not going to have sex. Well, I'm just going to stay home, man. I'll just not drink. Not I'll just do this at home. I'm not going to drive all the way over there to do nothing. You, <laughs> you, you got to be the character it. that does all the things and then makes it. <laughs> that is a that would be a goal of mine. See, yeah. my whole thing too is like I'll joke around and say like, look, if I have to die in a horror movie, here's two things. I don't want to go out first, and I'm going to get thrown through a window. Why? Because. Every single, not every Friday the 13th movie, but every Friday the 13th movie that Jason throws somebody through a window, I laugh and I'm satisfied. Every nice. single one. I don't know why. I just love it. <laughs> it's just one of those things. So it's just like those two things and I'm good. If I have to die in a movie, let me die, you know, getting thrown through a window and uh, I just can't be first. That, that's actually like one of the first things I look at when I get a, a script as an actor. I'm like, uh, okay, when do I die? And two, how you know so yeah. i'm always like that, to me that, that that's the most fun is like okay do i get a cool death you know <laughs> that see that would be my next thing is yeah. if i have to die first give me the best death in the whole movie that one like have you seen the movie terrifier yeah yeah that's actually that, that was the same um distribution company as our film oh nice so you I, at least you as well you know the saw kill right that's like one kill that everybody who's seen that movie discusses that would be how i want not getting cut in half like that but i'd want that type of kill to where it's like people are going to be talking about that for the next x amount of years like did you see how um sir story got killed in friday the 13th part 76 yeah that was an awesome kill like that that would i would be fine dying first in a horror movie <laughs> if, if, if it was one of those out. I, which i mean you 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 don't know obviously that it's going to be an iconic kill but you're just like okay you're reading the script you're like okay i at least have the best kill in this movie in my opinion people are like how come he gets to die like that like, well, you know i do that's why I, I, I actually i can't wait you said you hadn't seen drive yet i can't wait till you see it because there's some pretty epic kills in that movie oh um, i can't wait i can't wait either and like i said i'm fan of good kills. you're gonna be like Oof. as a matter of fact you know what i'll do is i don't know how your schedule is but i'll reach out to you I'm going to add it to the wheel when it gets picked. Cause what we do, like whatever. So we, like I said, we do the show Tuesdays and Thursdays for this show. So obviously the Tuesday show, pick the wheel, whatever it is Thursday, we're doing that and vice versa for Thursday. It'll be Tuesday. So say for example, tomorrow dry blood gets picked. 
I'll reach out to you if you're free when we record and stuff for the following episode. I want you to come on and review the movie with us. Oh, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. <laughs> I actually, uh, uh, if you'd be, I reviewed mean, my own film, that would be funny. <laughs> if you'd be cool with doing that. I think that'd be, I think it'd be fun. I, I've never done that with anybody that I've never done with a producer, director, actor, anybody that's been in a film, like reviewing it with them and with me and my co. And I think that'd be a fun, funny time and going live for, for however many people do tune in. It would be cool for them. Like, Hey, we actually have the actor from the movie in this. You guys can, you know, shoot some questions off, go check this movie out and all this other fun stuff. But I feel like that would be a really fun thing to do. Yeah, yeah. And if, if it's great. something to where we absolutely had to schedule it, I mean, I'd rather just do the wheel, of course. If we had to schedule it, we could also do something where I can make, okay, we could make a thing working around all of our schedules as well. But let well, me know, man. Let me know. Uh, you know, we're we're mainly just hiding. Uh, oh, okay. Well, all this craziness in. So, uh, you know, yeah. we're, we're pretty chill around the house. So, <laughs> all right. Well, in that case. But when it comes up, I'm gonna hit you up. The guy, look, movie's here. <laughs> Are you free? So, so do you do you watch it and review it as you're watching it, or do you watch it beforehand and then go back? No, and- we watch it beforehand, mm-hmm. and like I, I always I want to do like the mystery science theater thing with certain movies. I'm gonna do those more so with like um indie shorts that are like that people put up on YouTube. Of course, get the permission first. Only for the simple fact of copyright and all that. I don't want it to get taken down and all this other stuff, but we want to do it. So, um, which I know one, one person already okayed it for us. We just have to set things up. But basically what I want to do is watch the movie, like have the movie share my screen, watch the movie live. So like, say if you're watching the live feed, you're watching it. Other people are watching it and the shorts. Cause I say shorts cause they're like a half hour tops. And then, you know, we'll be discussing through the movie here and there, me and whoever's on with me, and then give us like a really good deep, you know, give the people a review, show people how we review movies and all this other stuff. Because what what we do is um, for both shows, we'll pick out, pick out something from the movie and it'll be like, you know, how many, I don't know anything about dry blood, but I'm just using the skull in the back. How many skulls would you give this movie? But it'd be something that has to do with the movie. Like how many or was that a horse head or a deer head? How many horse heads would you give this movie? Something like something fun or funny from the movie. We, we picked that out. So people would actually be able to see like what we're picking out from that movie. So say if it's a short and there's something funny in that short, we'll mention like right there as we're watching the movie, like boom, that's, that's what we're going to review the movie out of. Like I know for one short that I watched, we didn't do a live thing for it, but like we reviewed it afterwards. We didn't spoil it. We reviewed it afterwards. And, um, in the movie, there was a part where they were cooking, and this always pisses me off in movies when they're cooking in movies and they barely season the food. So I said, like, how much salt, how much seasoning would you give this movie out of ten? <laughs> stuff just like fun stuff like That's that funny. to make it more, you know, make it a little more entertaining, make it funny, and yeah. So yeah, we gotta for Dry Blood. Yeah, we would watch it. We would watch it first and then review it. Yeah, you but, you might want to uh, you might actually want to watch it twice. Uh, because it's a different movie the second time you watch it. it, and it's sort of built that way on purpose. But it's uh, it's it's meant to be the kind of movie that you have to watch a couple of times. Like it's a good watch the first time you see it, but mm-hmm. then when you watch it again, you're like, whoa, that's crazy. Because it changes, you know, once you get to the end, it changes your perspective of, of the film and what's happening, and so okay. like, you, you understand it in a different way. Uh, good enough. So it's it's you know it's meant to be the kind of movie that you have on your shelf. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they can go back to, but a lot of people, you know, like we, we've actually heard from a lot of people that have watched it like five, six times, and they're like, every time I watch this movie, I see something different. So that, that's uh, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Is it out on streaming? Uh, it is. I'm not sure where. I know it's on IMDb TV. It was on Amazon okay. Prime for a while. Um, it was on Tubi for a while, but it, um, the way the licensing works with that, like they just have it for a little while and then it, it changes. So. Uh, if you go to the uh, Epic Pictures website uh, for Dry Blood, uh, I think it has links to all the places where it's on. But I know it's on, okay. it's on like Vudu and and you know YouTube and you know. Uh, okay, so it's okay. a lot of video on demand stuff. Good, 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 good. Because I, oh, it's still on Tubi. Well, it says it is. Hang on, let me click this Tubi link really quick. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's still there. I think I just looked for it on Tubi and, and it wasn't there anymore. But I know it's on IMDb TV, and that's that's another one. That's like Tubi. Okay, I do have IMDb TV, 
Bloody Knuckles. Is it Bloody Knuckles Entertainment? It is. Yeah, it's on Tubi still. Is it? Oh, yep. Huh. Yep. Oh, I, just, it, I, I look for it because um, someone said that they were looking for it and I couldn't find it. Did it cut? Oh, wait, 2019? Yeah. Film? Yep. Nice. So maybe it's back. So, yeah, Tubi. I was going to say this, this looks like a different cover, but I, you just told me a few minutes ago that, that you guys changed it. Oh, yeah, different. this is the, uh, uh, should be this cover. Yep. That's exactly what it is. Oh, is that a DVD? That's a brand new DVD. It is. I, I don't have a copy of the Blu-ray here either, but the Blu-ray is actually really cool because that has a the Blu-ray has both covers, so it has the the original cover too that you can flip if you like that better, and that one's got uh, like behind the scenes and a bunch of other uh, cool little extras. I love behind. See, you just sold the movie to me, man. <laughs> it's a pretty cool one actually. Like it, it's a it's a fun, uh, and there's like a um, director's commentary, you know, uh, filmmaker's commentary where Clint and I watch the movie and. Uh, talk about different crazy things i like that yeah I, I, we always loved those like uh you know in the old days of uh buying vhs's you know you could get the behind the scenes or the early days of uh dvds you know they, they would pack them full of all of these cool extras that they don't really do that very much anymore so they don't but that was that was part of the fun <laughs> they don't unfortunately <laughs> Dry blood. That, that was a that was film school for a lot of people. You know, a lot of you know, especially people that were like you know monster kids that were like doing their own little special effects and that kind of stuff. Like you'd watch the uh, the you know behind the scenes making of you know Raiders of the Lost Ark or whatever. Mm -hmm. and you, you know, figure out how to make that you know with your GI Joe man or whatever. You know? Yeah, no, I I appreciate that kind of stuff more now as an adult because you're like a real fan of these movies or the franchises or certain actors and actresses and you're just like. I wonder how it was behind the scenes. And now you finally get to see that stuff. And I'm just like, holy wow. Is there a specific place that'd be better to buy this movie? Like, is there, does it help you guys anymore where I buy it from? Um, no, I don't think so. Oh, I see what you're saying with it. If you get it from uh, the Epic Pictures, though, you get the two covers. Yeah, the, the, as long as you get the Blu ray, uh, if you have the Blu ray, then it has both. From anywhere? Yeah. Oh, okay. And there's a, actually, I'll grab, I'm going to grab the vinyl. Free region. Hooray. This is actually pretty dope. We were pretty stoked about this. We actually got a, a, a vinyl release. Oh, that's awesome. The soundtrack. Let's see. And then they did a really cool thing with the, um, the vinyl. Where, like, they actually made it look like, you know... <laughs> It's like dried I, blood. I like that. I like that a lot. I wish I had a freaking record. I gotta get a damn record player. My wife was <laughs> yeah, that's, actually, that, that's my mustache. That's my favorite thing. Is that, that's my mustache on the front. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got another question for you, man. The, with this movie, how do I get a copy signed by you? Um, that's a good question. Uh. If I had some, I don't really have any of the things. But um, if if you order and send it to me, I could I could sign it and send it back to you. And I, I could have uh, Clint sign it as well. Ah, okay. Um, who's the uh, main star of it? Uh, I guess that'd be probably the easiest way to do it. That's yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. You're right. Well, what, what yeah, if, I, if I had more copies of it, I just have the one um, here. But uh, as far as the the, uh, the Blu-rays and stuff. But yeah, if, if you, uh, you you order one, uh, uh, let me go back to you on that because I'll, I'll talk to Clint and see if he has any uh, and then we'll kind of figure it out. I don't mind ordering one, though, either. So either, either or. But yeah, definitely. Like That's something like I try to do is, if I can is, especially when I'm buying like a, an indie movie, is if I can get it signed, to order it from the artist and get it signed or the creators and get it signed, I will. I'd rather do yeah. that than going to say going to Walmart and buying the movie. I'd rather get it from you guys. That that's why I was asking if it's better if I got it from the Epic website versus like say Amazon because I don't, I don't like I said I don't know how that works as far as the kickback. I don't know how that works at all. Yeah, I don't I don't either. Tell you the truth, like you know, Epic handles a lot of that stuff. So um, okay, you know, we we just find out like you know three or four months later, <laughs> basically how how it's doing. <laughs> oh, that's good though. That's awesome. 
can't wait to watch the review of this thing now. Oh, that's going to be so freaking fun. You're going to like it. I, I think you, you'll really, uh, you know, based on the kind of movies that you said that you like, I, I think you'll really appreciate it. But uh, that was fun. We had a good time making it. That's for sure. You know, and, and you know, we when we're making movies, it's like we make them because we love them, you know, mm -hmm. and and we grew up watching these kind of movies. And, and this was just a big part of our. Uh, our, our personality and our, you know, growing up. And so, you know, we, we want to, you know, we want to do right by the people who influenced us, you know, mm -hmm. so we want to do the best thing that we can do making it. So. Have you ever, here's one for you. I don't think I've ever asked this question either. Have you ever been in a movie that after you, you know, you did the movie or whatever and you watched it and you just didn't, you don't have to mention the movie at all, but have you ever done a movie? And then after you watch it, you're just like, I hate this shit. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think as an artist, there's a there's a part of you that always has that feeling, um, and and I think earlier on when I was there were things that like I thought were going to be really good, and I either worked on them or you know uh, was in it or whatever. But um, and and you see it and it's like kind of disappointing, you know, mm -hmm. or or, or kind of awful, whatever. But like, um, you know, I've, I've never had a thing where like I really regretted it, you know. I know some people have, have had that experience where like the movie was really not what they represented it to be, but um, but I, I think for the most part, you know, filmmakers try their best to make something good, and sometimes yeah. it doesn't work, and you know, and and you know, but at the end of the day, like everybody's just trying, you know, you're just trying to do trying to do good work, and and uh, you kind of look back at stuff that you did. Um, usually, I'm not generally critical of other filmmakers because I know what it takes to be a filmmaker. And mm -hmm. um, so I respect that. And, and to have made a movie at all is, is uh, quite an achievement really. Oh, I agree. Everything's against you, but um, you know, and I think as, as artists, like it's not really our position to, um, to judge other people's art. You know, I think it's our job to make art and to learn from other people, you know, like, and like I said, like what's working, what's not working, that kind of thing but uh it's we're usually hardest on ourselves so when when you go back and you see uh your own work you're always like oh i wish i hadn't done that or i wish mm -hmm. i hadn't done it that way or, or whatever but you learn from that so um so the answer is basically you know i'm 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 lucky to have the opportunity to have worked on everything i've done and so i i learned from all of it so <laughs> okay so what i got from that answer is yes there was movies i didn't like but Here's the but. It was a learning experience. And it's probably a better learning experience when you I don't want to say fail, but like when you're when for movie making, I don't know anything about it, but you know, you say you did a movie you didn't really like, you learn more from that than I'm, I feel you do from which I gotta guess you apply to anything like that. When you do something so good, when you do something great when you're passing, you don't really you don't learn as much when you win all the time. You learn a lot more from losses than from wins, is what I'm getting at. Because you're like, oh, okay, well. I lost this or whatever. So this is what I can do. I can do this, 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 and this better next time. And next time I'll get it versus win, 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 win. It's like, okay, well, I don't have to change anything. I'm not saying everybody's like that, but if you're winning a hundred percent across the board, 90% of the time, it's like, I don't really have to change anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. I think the wins do the most damage in a way. Um, Cause you know, like when you say like, if you, if you were to make a, you know, whatever it is, an, an album or movie or, or mm -hmm. painting or whatever your art form is, and, and it's immediately recognized as being brilliant. You know, people are like, oh my gosh, this is so great. Uh, where do you go from that? You know, like, because mm -hmm. you don't know why it's great. You're like, well, it, it just worked out that people liked it. And then they're like, that was great. Do another one. You're like, uh, can't. You know, so like you, you, you have a lot of artists that, um, you know, it can be crippling, you know, for an artist. But if if you create something and it's not perfect, uh, then you can go, I can do better next time. Yeah. But if you do something and, and you start getting too much praise, one, you don't trust it because you're like, I don't know why people mm -hmm. think this is so good. Um, but to like you, you start to not trust yourself as the artist. So you start to think like, oh, this was a fluke, you know, so. Um, and, and I think you see that a lot, especially in like the music industry. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. I was going to say with music, like say any genre of music, <laughs> someone comes out with that first, that it could, it, with music, it could be multiple things though. Cause it can either be that really, really good album. And then after that, the next one, the next one could be good, but it's not as good as the, it's not as good as the first one or it doesn't have the same commercial success. So therefore it's deemed not as good or right. it could be 
or you can be one of those people who has that one hit wonder to where it's that one song that comes out any time of year that takes a summer banger and it's in the next 25 movies it's in 18 commercials they have old ladies singing the song and doing the dance i thought it was in the 90s at least and then that's all you hear from that artist is that yeah. one song which i mean it's i guess it's good and bad it's good because they get that maybe year or two success off of that one song but then it's like you only got that year or two of success off that, off that one song and you busted your ass creating all this other all this other art and yeah. now you're kind of forgotten so i i agree with what you said about how if you're hitting right on top versus if you just i guess if you climb the ladder little by little then you get up here it's i don't know i like for me personally i like being the underdog because people i like it when people don't expect you to be as good at something or as intelligent as you are with certain things because of whatever the case may be because you're a, a guy because of whatever because you're just because you're you they're just like oh, this, he won't know nothing about this then you go there and they're just like oh my goodness how do you know this like, how, how the hell do you know this well i watch these like, well, how the fuck do you think i, I do the same <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it, anytime you go into battle, you always want your opponent to underestimate you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you All want to go the other way. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Like if it's a boxing ring, I'm not getting in there with Mike Tyson. He, <laughs> 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 I'll walk in the ring and walk right back out. Like, oh, no, nope. nope. <laughs> Even at this age, I've seen how he hits now. At that was months. a fun concussion. <laughs> Wasn't worth it. <laughs> but, uh, Shit, man! I gotta see this Dry Blood movie. I'm like excited. To, I'm more excited to see it now, just from the, the little things you told me. Which I'm glad you didn't spoil it for me because I have to see it <laughs> to, you know, enjoy it. And that fucking knife is cool. What's that? That knife, the knife with the Dry Blood thing was cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> thing with the poster, that yeah, was cool. Have you ever played a killer in a movie? Have you ever played like the villain? Kind of the villain in Drive Light, actually. So, um, yes, yes, I, yeah, actually, no, I've, I've been a villain on actually. <laughs> I, I had to kind of go through all of the like, okay, what yeah. about, yeah, um, but yeah, uh, those are actually the most fun. I was gonna say that was my next question. What's the more fun, villain or victim? Yeah, definitely, definitely the villain, yeah, uh, especially like the villain that you don't know is a villain, like that's ah, a character, one of those. But uh, One of those. Yeah, um, I'm I'm fascinated with sort of the the darkness of the human psyche and what people are capable of, um, you know. So like exploring that is always uh, really fun. See, and I feel like for me, I feel like that would be the fun role too, is because as a villain, you can damn near do anything, and it's not like I can't believe he did that sort of to an extent versus if you're the good guy or yeah, if you're the good guy and you do something bad they're just like holy shit i can't believe he did that like oh my goodness and you have more free i feel like as a villain you have more freedom you have a lot more freedom to be, just be that whatever type of character and you can't do that as the good guy and you definitely can't do that in real life people <laughs> Yeah, it's just, I feel like a lot of times, like the, the villains, you know, depending on the story, but like they tend to be the most idealistic. Um, mm -hmm. Like, like the villains are the, are the ones with a very clear idea. Like they know who they are and they know what they want. And um, they're not concerned with gray areas of it's true. morality or whatever. They're just like, this is what it is. This is what I want, you know? And, and so, like, uh, a villain is never a villain to themselves. Mm -mm. I think uh, th they always have a, a clear reason for why they do what they do. And it's just different than what other people. You yeah. Know? And, and you, it, you know, as a, as a writer or a director or, or as the actor playing, like you have to love your villains, you know, like you have to love that character and, and just accept they have a different um, scale of morality that they work on um, that allows them to function the way that they do. And, and that's what creates an interesting villain. Cause like, if you're playing, they're like, Oh, I'm so evil, you know, like that's ridiculous and nobody's <laughs> going to enjoy that. But the best villains are the ones that, uh, you know, you can kind of get behind a little bit, you know, Jason. Even, yeah. Even if you think of like, uh, like Thanos or whatever, you know, like 
eh, you know, he had a point, you know, but mm-hmm. he didn't quite, you know, not the best way to go about it. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. I'm trying. I'm. I'm trying to think of like a movie example. I. I even like the. Um, the I guess you'd call him the antihero or like the. Um, the person who's doing something. They're not. I don't necessarily call it. Classify them as a villain. But uh, what movie was it? I believe it was with Denzel Washington, and his son was in the hospital. And he pretty much held up the hospital till they did. Any, I like those type of movies to where the, it's like that person where it's just like, I'll do anything for my family type of thing to, you know, help them survive. I've been getting screwed over by everything I need. I have to do this to, you know, I like yeah. those. Cause it's like, they're making, they're, they're having those, they're thinking about that gray area. Then they're like, you know what? I, I have to step into that gray area because I've done everything else I could. And, nothing's working or nothing's going on. I have to do this. And now that, and then then when they step in that gray area, then there's like, Oh, you know how, you know how those movies go. Like that story is, Oh, like this guy's bad, blah, 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 blah. He's on the run. But it's like, okay, but what's he really doing? Why is he doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Or or like when you, you have a lead character who's like, you know, a criminal or a bad guy or whatever, that's, Mm -hmm. um, you know, good fellows, you know, or, uh, falling down, you know, that was a great one where, you know, like you're, you're, kind of with that character but you're like this guy's kind of an asshole <laughs> you know what I mean? like, yeah. like they're, they're really not up to good things but they're they're so fascinating and to for the audience to sort of empathetically you know step into those shoes of somebody who's doing something that's against what uh society and everything that we know tells us is the right thing to do and then to sort of understand why you might make those choices like i, I think that um that kind of storytelling sort of makes us all better at being human in a way because Agreed. start to see um start to see the world as more gray in a sense you know mm-hmm. i have two more questions for you that i know i can think of off the top of my head do you have to and this this actually it's like a one question two part i guess you could say but acting and directing for horror i'll say do you have to be in like a certain mindset when you're going into character or when you're directing a film or writing a script even do you have to have like a darker tone or a darker type of mind? You know, do you have to have, do you have to be like a certain mood or mindset to create something like that? I'm or pretty th- dark. <laughs> I really don't have to, I don't have to really go that, uh, go that far to go uh, darker. I have a pretty dark sense of humor and sensibility anyway. So okay. it's really not much of a stretch, but uh, you know, really with, with any, any character and for me, like I'm always sort of, um, kind of probing into the humanity of, of whatever the character is or the mm-hmm. situation is or whatever, you know, and, and, and it's always a push to just sort of get to um, get to what's real, you know, and what's, mm-hmm. uh, what's honest. And, you know, sometimes, you know, what's real and what's honest can be pretty gross. Yeah. And I, I like asking that question just, just cause I, I get different answers all the time. Some people have to be in like, I don't want to say a dark place where it's like depressing, but some people have to be in like a dark mood or a dark place to get to these characters. Some people just have to, some people just have to yell and hit things. Like for, I'll give you an example. Um, Kane Hodder playing Jason. He wouldn't like, he would, uh, I don't know if he said in his document, he either said in his documentary or his book. I don't remember. But anyways, he said that, uh, basically getting into the character of Jason, he would try to stay away from when he's dressed up, like, in, you know, dressed as Jason, he would try to stay away from the cast. That way, when they see him, the fear is more realistic. And it get, kind of gets him in his own type of mindset. He said he'd be like in the background, just, you know, in the back by himself, like punching and kicking things, just getting himself hyped up, getting in the character. And I, I think that's awesome. But I also think it's cool how, like you just said, I could just, that's just me. I am just <laughs> a character. I'm just a, you know, I could be, I have a dark mind. So I can have a dark mind easy. And I've talked to other people. They're just like, they could be out and about, which I'm sure this is with a lot of people that create that right they get out and about like grocery shopping and you're just like, Oh shit. I know how I can kill this person. Now you might, I, I'm sure you don't say it out loud, but you're thinking like, I know how I can, you know, in my script, I know how I can kill this person now. And you might write it on your grocery list. You know, for- <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But I, I like how that is. Like there's been people who've told me how they've done that. There's been people who told me that they're like dead asleep and just something just pops into their mind in their dream. They pop up and write it down. Which I think, 
I think all that's awesome. I think all that is just amazing. I'm just like, how do you come up with this stuff? Like, how do you come up with a script? And it's just, it's something I do want to learn. Maybe not like real deep, but just like brief, just like kind of learn and figure it out. Just like I can do something on my own, something fun and small with myself and some friends or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, it'd just be something else just to learn. And it'd be cool to know how to do that just to maybe watch and review movies a little bit different because now you're watching it from a different scope of like okay well i know i wrote my my bullshit 20 minute movie but now i'm looking at this different <laughs> maybe this movie isn't as bad as i thought it was or maybe it it's, was it's, if you you get into that you know like there's so many great um um uh, great programs out there to edit with there's there's like the the ability to shoot something with your your iphone or your your whatever your phone is like mm -hmm you know, the, the technology has, has made it really easy to become a, a, a you know, filmmaker these days. Um, I agree. And, and it's like, if you have a good idea and if you have heart behind it and you're really trying to make something good and you, you're probably going to be better at it than you think, but you know, if you can take, make something and enter it into some festivals, like that's actually really fun. Um, because when you get into the sort of the festival world and you, you, you go there, then you're there with all of these other people who are just trying to figure it out. We're all just trying to make movies and do this thing that we like, but you get to hang out with these other people that have made something. And then you watch each other's work and, and talk about it when I'm like, that could be really fun. That's awesome. a really cool part of the process, especially like in the indie world that, uh, you know, I think the, you know, on the bigger levels, they don't really get to do that, you know, cause it's, uh, they don't get to, to be part of as much of, of the fun of it, of creating something and sharing yeah. it with their friends, you know, because it's like, okay, you do the job. Now you're on the next job or, you know, you've got all these people and all this pressure to, you know, get it right or whatever, but like, yeah, you don't get to really enjoy it and, you know, kind of laugh at yourself along the way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's really something that I'm going to try to do. I'm going to get into and try to do at some point this year, COVID or not, I'll figure something out. I mean, there's there's ways around it <laughs> and all that other stuff doing it safe of course but there's ways around it and it's just again it's something that people have been saying that i should at least try at least just try once i'm like thought about it, thought about it and like, you know what why not why the hell not <laughs> yeah go for it go for it you know if you like movies just make one you know i love movies and it's just shit it's i wouldn't even mind making a terrible movie just for people to review it and hate it <laughs> 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 because well i say that because like with horror horror is the only genre that i know of that i that i can say for myself if someone's like aaron this is a horrible movie you know you should check it out with a horror <laughs> movie. i'm like yeah you're right i should and i do i, I actually go towards i actually go towards a bad movie quicker than i go towards a good movie as far as when there's the hype around it, when there's the hype around certain movies and someone's like, Oh my God, this movie was so good. You got to see it. It was the best movie I've ever seen. The scariest movie I've ever seen. You go see it and you're like, especially with social media, you see that a whole lot more now, best movie, scariest movie on Netflix or like, and you go watch it and just like, okay, well this movie wasn't that bad, but it definitely wasn't that scary versus you go watch a horrible, someone's like, this movie was terrible. And you go watch that movie and you enjoy it because you're expecting it to be one of the worst movies you've ever seen in your life. And it's nowhere near that. And you're just like, man, I don't know what the hell you were talking about. That was a fun ass. That was a fun movie. <laughs> it's fun. It's funny, actually. Like when you see the reviews uh, and the ratings, like a lot of times movies that aren't as well uh, crafted, you know, they like don't have great acting or they don't mm -hmm. have great storytelling, like will actually do a lot better in the ratings. Like they'll end up with like a much higher rating than a film that was objectively better you know like if you you look at something that's like really complicated storytelling or you know really mm -hmm. well shot or whatever uh it almost seems like the the closer you get to making something really good uh the harder the audience treats it in a way because like you're yeah. sort of, uh, you're, you're put into a category of like well now they're comparing this to you know a hundred million dollar movie that came out the same year as opposed to like if you do something that's like kind of a little schlocky then then people are like they're sort of on board with it like oh this is just fun and so then they can go oh yeah this was this was terrible but i had a blast i'll give it a four and a half out of five stars you know <laughs> that kind of line. perfect example of this i don't know if you've ever seen this movie or not it's my favorite horror comedy as of right now and this has been standing for the past x amount of years i watched it about three or four times a year don't know why thanks killing it's a movie about a killer turkey yeah hilarious i love it <laughs> My wife can't stand it. Like, <laughs> I reviewed that movie three times on this show, 
And the very first time I was going to review it, it wasn't the first time I watched it, but I was watching it just to, you know, do another review on it. And she was sitting in the living room with me and she watched maybe two minutes of it and was just like, I, I can't watch this and just left the room. No. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of left the room. I was like, you're missing, I was like, you're missing a good movie. But I, I was watching uh, Velocipaster uh, with my son. Oh, and I- he stops the movie and he gets up and he goes into his room. And I was like, I guess he didn't like it. And then he comes back with his brother and he's like, you have to watch this. <laughs> he's like, you have to watch this. It's like so brilliant. Like, I don't know if you've seen, have you seen Velocipaster? Not yet. I've been meaning to watch that, but it's, it's so bad. It's great. See, and the, those are the movies. And don't get me wrong. I love great movies. I love good movies, but there's nothing, there's nothing like putting on a, a bad movie. That's so bad. It's good. There's yeah. nothing like that. Because and they knew. I mean, it wasn't like they were trying to do something. Yes, different. and that, that's how things killing is. That's a, that is. A, I yeah. I put it this way. I highly recommend that movie. I think you should watch it. Um, there is some nude scenes in it, so I don't know if you would watch that with your children, your sons, or not. I don't know how old oh, they are. They're they're like twenty, eighteen now. So they're. Oh yeah. All right. Never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's one of those movies to where you just turn your brain off and kick your feet up and enjoy it. Simple as that, and. Your wife may or may not like it. I don't know. Mine couldn't stand the first two minutes. <laughs> she doesn't know how to turn her brain off and just watch something, though. But, you know, <laughs> it's just one of those things, man. It's just one of those things. But, yeah, that I'm giving you homework. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. Thanks, Killings, your homework and dry blood <laughs> my homework. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and uh, I'll probably honest, honestly, I'll probably watch dry blood before the wheel even picks it just because you told me I should watch at least one or at least twice before I go to review it. So I'll probably watch it before the wheel picks it. And then when the wheel picks it, I'll watch it again. And yeah, I'm excited for it, man. I'm very excited for it. Well, let me know. I'm curious to see, uh, you know, see if you dig it. But oh, def- I think you will. I, I definitely will let you know. And I was being serious when it comes time to review it. I would like you on the episode with us. I'd yeah, love yeah, you let me know. This. I think it'd be a, a really fun, funny time. And <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just think it'd be cool, and it might be something I start trying to do on this show. Is whoever was involved in the movie, if they want to be on the movie to review it, just no, we will be honest because I rem- we had we did a live show. I'll tell you this last part, and then we can kind of wrap up. But we did a live show for sometime in December, and someone that was watching our live show, they were like, "Hey, I was in this this Christmas movie because we showed the trailer for whatever movie we were review- we were getting ready to review or we were reviewing or whatever. We showed a trailer for something. I don't remember what it was. And then the movie that he was in just happened to pop up next. He was like, Oh, I was in that movie. So we watched the trailer and he, I was like, we'll, re- we'll review this movie if you want us to, but we will be honest. And he was like, that's what we want. We would love for you to be honest. But the cool thing was when we did review the movie, he got like, uh, a few of the people that were a part of the movie to watch our live show, which was awesome. And honestly, the movie wasn't bad. It was like an, it was an anthology. I wish I could remember what the heck it was called, but it was a fun movie. It was, it was an anthology. And um, the third movie was the best out of the three. And that was actually the story that he was in, but it was still, it was still like fun overall, but it was, it was cool to get like that interaction with those people, like just them thanking us for reviewing the movie, them being in the conversation. And I'm like, it would be cool to actually have people on, like, I want to do an episode with people on, but we're, we're reviewing the movies as like a whole, instead of, you know, just me and my co-host or me and a guest reviewing the movie. I'd like to review it with people that are actually in the movie to see what they see, how they feel about the movie too. See what they would actually rate these movies that they were in. If they would give their honest opinion. (laughs) <laughs> that yeah, yeah, yeah. without any hard feeling because the guy was like he was like I, if you guys think it sucks let us know it sucks if you guys think it's great let us know it's whatever the case may be and i love people that are like that like if they if there was a podcast that reviewed podcasts and they reviewed mine i'd watch the show if they said this <laughs> right <laughs> if they said it was great hey i mean it's their opinion because at the end of the day everybody has their own opinion about anything and everything but i'm just speaking as far as like you know, music, movies, and all that stuff. And you're not wrong with that opinion how you feel about something. You're, you're not wrong. When it comes to, I'll just say with stuff like that, I'm not going to say with, I'm not going to get into all the other serious stuff, but with just stuff like, because it's how you feel about that piece of art. It's not for everybody. It just may not be for you. If you hate it, go ahead. Again, you want to review this show? Go ahead. Talk shit about it. I don't care. Because you're talk. because at the end of the day, you're still talking about it, which means you talking about it is going to get somebody else to go check it out. It's either, it can't be that bad or some people, Hey, 
this sounds like something right up my alley. I'm going to go check it out. Yeah, you were, you were talking earlier about the guy that, that, you know, having somebody troll you while you're, you know, while you're doing your podcast, having somebody troll is like, you're trolling me, but you're spending your time watching exactly. my podcast. So you know. I, I, I haven't had that happen, but I wouldn't get mad at it. I might, and I, I would, and I'm the type of person too, like if, and I'm, I mean, what I mean by you know, like trolling up is not being, I don't know. I don't even care. I would, if it was during like a live show, I would laugh it off, whatever. I might read a couple comments and respond a couple, one or two times. And after that, I'm just going to ignore it. Like that's, that's the thing with people, which I've had this conversation plenty of times. That's the one thing with people in general that I feel is we look out more for how do I word this? Cause I've heard a lot of people say this too. Like as far as, okay. So say somebody leaves a YouTube comment or a comment under one of your films or something that you, they know you're going to see or at you on Twitter or something. They do. A lot of people do the negative comments because we will look at those negative comments and respond to those quicker than we will. Somebody saying awesome movie, awesome movie, awesome movie. And then you got that one person, this movie sucks. You should die. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, why would you say that to somebody? You can say this movie sucks. You don't have to put the other extra part. But people will respond to that negativity faster than they'll respond to the positivity. And right. instead of ignoring the negativity and responding to the positivity as much as you can, just because it's like I ha- it's like that you put your defense mode up. Like, you know what? I'm not going to let you do this. But just ignore that. Because a lot of times, just from listening to like other shows and radio shows and stuff, people will say that and they'll respond to it. And those trolls are just trying to get attention. Like, hey, I'm a big fan of yours. I just wanted to get your attention. And when they hear that people go to that negativity stuff more so than the positive, they're going to do the negative. So it's like, why not respond more to the positive and ignore the negative? So if someone really is a fan of you, hey, I'm a fan of yours, blah, blah, blah. Cool film. A quick thank you. You know, thanks for watching this film, blah, blah, blah. I'm glad you're a fan. Cool. Awesome. If we, I think if people, well, I can't say we, cause I don't get comments like that. I wish I did good and bad. <laughs> It'll happen soon though. But, uh, I think if, as a, as people in general, if we start responding more to the positivity and things in life, I think it'd be a lot better than us. I mean, there, you just with this past, <laughs> these past, this past year and the way this year started, for example, I know there's a lot of serious stuff going on, but just in general, like a lot of the negativity that goes on in life and people always respond to that or social media, you always see negative, 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 two positive stories, negative, 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 two positive stories. Like people will share a fight faster than they'll share a kid, you know, working his ass off mowing lawns, let's say that becomes viral to get a bike or a car or do something, you know what I mean? Doing something positive like that. You'll share something negative and it'll get way more shares than the positive, which I think we need to 2021. We got to flip that. Let's start sharing this positivity stuff. And that doesn't mean you can't have negativity because that happens. That doesn't mean you can't like, I do a podcast. I talk a lot of shit about movies. I do. I don't consider that negative. I consider this an art that I'm just, you know, I'm watching something. I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing on my show. I'm reviewing the movie. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to be doing. But I'm not right. saying like, I don't know. It, it's just one of those things I just hope kind of changes. We need more of a positive, that positivity. I try to preach that a lot. That positivity will just, it goes a lot further too. If you've just growing up, you see it. I'm sure we've, we've all grown up around people that are just negative 24 seven. You kind of just, after a while you kind of weed, weed them off. And then you see how your life starts to get a little bit better better and better and they're still stuck in the same doing the same dumb not necessarily doing illegal just in that same negative mindset and they're still stuck in like that same funk they've been in for the past five years like well maybe if you change your mindset like a lot of people think it's oh you're so lucky you do this but it's like well one i work hard for what i do and then two i have a different mindset that i did 10 years ago 15 20 years ago i have a more of a positive mindset as i get older as i grow because Every day you wake up, you should be happy about that. Just just that alone, should, you should be happy. Every day that you wake up and open your eyes and breathe and get out of bed, you should be happy about that because there's plenty of people that don't get that, that aren't going to be able to do that tomorrow morning, for example, which is sad. It sucks. It's horrible. But that alone should make you want to keep that alone. That should be positive right there for you. Like, I woke up this morning. That's That's amazing. I'm happy I woke up this morning. Yeah. Yeah, every time you get a chance to, uh, you know, try again, you got to be grateful for it. You know, yeah, I mean, whatever that is. You know, going back to the trolls thing, 
you start leaving the negative comments on my thing, I'm going to be grateful for it because I got to wake up and read those. Thank you when they come. <laughs> That's how I bring it back to that. So, yeah. you know, you know, there's people, you know, if, if, even if it's a uh, negative, you know, it's people giving you energy, you know, because they're, like I said, they're spending the time watching your show. They, they tuned in enough to, to comment. So, yeah. And same when I'll put it like this. If people want to say I'm a troll for my podcast or when I talk shit about certain movies or certain actors like Nicolas Cage, I can't stand. I mean, hey, it's you're still getting some sort of I'm still talking about them or talking about that movie, especially if I'm reviewing the movie. Same thing, in a sense, but I'm doing it in an art form. I'm not doing it to hurt feelings. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's watching a, a thing with David Mamet, um, famous playwright, filmmaker, whatnot. Um, and he was talking about uh, the tradition of having um, the actors come out at the end of a stage show and bow. Mm -hmm. And, um, you, you know, I, th I think a lot of people think of that as like the actors come out so that you can applaud them and, and say, well, you, great job, whatever. So like they, it, they think it's about them, but it's, that's not the purpose of it. The, the reason that the actors come out at the end of a show and bow is because they're thanking the audience for their time and for their attention. And they're like, thank you for paying attention to us, oh. and taking time out of your life and choosing to be here with us. That makes and, um, and it's and it's a respect you know and it's like thank you and and that's something that um you know as a filmmaker that like i'm it, it's good to be in tune with you know so like you know somebody re watches your movie and gives you a bad review or whatever it's like you watched it thank you you know yeah that's it that's Sorry actually that, that, that didn't connect with you for whatever reason but you know glad that uh Not, glad that you spent the time i like that you said that though because though as far going back to the bowing because if you think if you watch um if you watch or if you're ever involved in, especially in your childhood with martial arts, that's one thing they do is they bow before. I mean, as far as like when you're in, you know, Taekwondo, karate and all that, they bow before and after, you know, the fight or whatever the case may be, or, or before and after your class, you bow. And that's a sign of respect. I mean, and the higher ups, like say UFC and all that, some of them do, some of them don't when they're fighting each other, they might bow when they first walk in the cage, but it is, it shows a sign of respect. And I never thought about it as far as because I've been to plays and all that. I've never thought about it from plays. I always thought it just, you know, for the audience, because every single time you see that, the audience is clapping and cheering and whistling and hooping and hollering, which I do get. But I never thought of it as the actors. That's their way of saying thank you and showing res showing a sign of respect for you coming in. And however long you were here for, you took the time to come and watch this. Watch this. I think that's awesome. Yeah, that, that, that's where the tradition comes from. It's not always, uh, you know, I think a lot of times the actors don't know that, you know, necessarily like they might be out there going, ah, praise me, praise me. You're like, oh, all right. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, with a lot of the people that I've worked with and studied with, you know, it's like um, there's a, an awareness that the art is greater than us, you know, and, and mm -hmm. that we're always, you know, whether it's theater, film, music, whatever that, um, we're always sort of aware that um, we're serving this greater ideal of storytelling or of, of art form or human connection and whatnot. And that, um, you know, we're temporary. We're just this, we happen to be holding the torch right now or playing the role or, you know, filming the thing or whatever, but um, we're, we're trying to keep the art alive by being part of it. I like that. And I agree with that. And I feel like that's all, all forms of art and, I feel like it's it's one of those things too where I think about it even more and more now. Even with even with podcasting, it's like I know one day I'm not going to be here, and it's it'll be cool to where if you know I get to the point to where I have a bunch of fans that just want to hear or listen to some old stuff, they can always go back and listen. To, and it's the same with movies, music, even a painting. Like you can always go back, even if you have to Google. Say if you're a fan of Michelangelo's work, you can always Google and look up those paintings, or you can. I mean, I'm sure you can purchase something that's reprinted of course you can always go back and look or watch or listen to those things i think that's that's one beautiful thing about art like music is a great example because there's so many musicians i mean act, act, actually music and movies are great examples there's so many artists that have passed away and you're still a fan of their stuff like i mean michael jackson tupac red fox to name just to name a few people i just i, I named red fox i just watched uh about a week or two ago i watched harlan nights with my wife Mm -hmm. Oh my god, so hilarious! So <laughs> funny. I seen that movie as a kid. And there was a lot of things I did not understand, of course. But watching it as an adult, I was like, 
this movie is so hilarious and it it's it holds up it, it's one of those movies that holds up and i mean again i understand it now. <laughs> like you understand what's going on with certain <laughs> movies like oh that's why they, that's why you know after you you hear the adults watch the, you can't watch this movie but you hear them laughing and you're sneaking to watch it you're like I, I don't see what's so funny. you see certain parts that are funny that stand out that kids laugh at but there's other parts you as a kid i know i would do this you would laugh just because the adults are laughing or because the older people are laughing but now as an adult you're just like oh shit that, that that's, <laughs> that's funny that's <laughs> messed up <laughs> <laughs> these, these, I see why they want me to. These guys are perverts, but this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh man, this is a good time. We definitely got to do this again, man. Definitely. And if there's any, <clears throat> before we wrap up, though, if there's anything you want to plug, now's the time. Feel free to just let people know where they can find you and all that good, all that cool stuff, man. Cool. Um, yeah, there's, there's, you know. Things out. The dry blood, obviously, it's uh, check that out. Um, Evil down the street. Uh, mm-hmm. That was uh, that was a fun time. That was um, cool. Yeah. Uh, got a bunch of stuff coming out uh, pretty soon. I was in a movie called Area Fifty One that a friend of mine uh, did a cool little sci-fi that's really funny. Uh, my son's in that as well. Um, nice. It, it's what is it? Uh, what's in, what's the full name of that Area Fifty One? Uh, it's it's it, but it's it's basically it's based on the uh, raid on Area Fifty One. Um, you know that almost happened, <laughs> but that it's a really funny funny movie. Uh, um, a few of the projects coming out, but uh, yeah, uh, like I'm on Instagram and and Facebook, whatnot. So uh, you know, as I'm doing stuff, I'll I'll put it up there. I've got um, a couple documentaries I'm working on as well. Nice. Yeah. When you when you get a chance, just email me your links that you would want people. For your social media, if you want people to follow you, that is. But if you want people to follow you, any links. And when this episode goes out live, I will put all the links down below for YouTube and all that good stuff and the audio. And um, yeah. <laughs> but thank I do want to thank you for coming on. I had I had a great time. I definitely definitely want to do this again, and I definitely need you on for that drive. Well, I'll say I want you on. Because I want, I don't want you to feel like you have to be on that episode. <laughs> but I want you on for the dry blood review, and I think it'll be a good time, man. I think it'll be, a, yeah. I know it'll be a good Let time. Yeah, I'll, uh, if if you want, I can uh, hit up Clint too. I don't know if you you can run multiple uh, at the same time, but uh, I, I can have, hit up Clint too, who's the oh the yeah yeah that. oh yeah yeah. It could be me, you, if Clint, pull him my co-host. That'd be fun. So be on the lookout for that, people. Dry blood. He said he's going to be on here, and he said he's going to make Clint come on here no matter what Clint says. <laughs> he said it with his <laughs> eyes. <laughs> he just said that too, but he said it with his eyes. You got to read. You got to read his face. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. As always, I'll see you in your nightmares. <laughs>